up until this point over uh, our last seven sessions, we've covered most of the setup that's required to actually do the creation and building up of the networks and running the simulation. Uh, so today we're going to start discussing some of the different performance measures that are within VISIM and how to configure those to record data and how to set up those objects within VISIM and then also going over how to view and access those results. So to start, we're going to take a look at the basic configuration, um, and then we're going to go through each of the different types of evaluations, such as the network-wide measures, some corridor and intersection measures, vehicle evaluations, and then also a few others. So to start, we're going to go over, again, that basic configuration within VISIM. And this is going to involve setting up all the different types of data that are going to be collected, and then how to configure how that data is going to be collected. So today we're kind of going to live within this evaluation menu um, up at the top. And the first thing we're going to take a look at again is that configuration option. So once you have that option selected, that's going to open up this window here on the right. And this window is going to be comprised of three different tabs, which we're going to go over in more detail. So the first tab is going to deal with result management. And the first section up at the top can be um, corresponds to really what output is going to be saved. So this can be set up to store only data from the current simulation or the current simulation multi-run if you have uh, multiple seeds set up and you're running like a batch of different seeds. Or you can set up to just store data for all of the simulation runs, including the ones in the past. So sometimes that all simulation run selection can be especially helpful during calibration. If you want to kind of run the simulation through, take a look at the results, maybe make a change, and then go back and view the results, so then you can do a quick comparison and kind of see that before and after change and see um, how that calibration um, is working for you. And then once you're kind of done with the calibration portion and you're ready to start collecting results, that's when we'd recommend switching to that um, of current multi-run only option, and that will just allow you to get um, just the clean data from that current set of runs that you're doing, and then you can see all the averages and information from that group of runs. And then down at the bottom here, there's a whole section for adding in different aggregation percentile values. And so this would allow you to add maybe like an 85th or 95th percentile value, and these are going to show up down near the bottom of any of the uh, result list. And in order to add any of these, you'll just right click in that um, window over here, and then you can click add, and then you can enter in any value between zero and 100, and that will add in that, that um, percentile value. And what's nice about this is that you can add this either before the simulation is run or even after the simulation is run, and this will just drop in some additional um, row items, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. All right, so moving on to that second tab, um, which is called Result Attributes. So this is where all the main data configuration is going to be set up for any results that are going to be kind of collected and reported within VISM. So by default, VISM is going to collect and aggregate data for all vehicles. However, up at the top, you can select some additional vehicle classes um, within this window if you want to collect separate data as well. And what this will do is allow you to collect data for the all vehicles, and then in this case, we have car and heavy vehicles selected. So those will show up as separate um, outputs for both of those vehicle classes. And then in the bottom section is where all of the performance measures are going to show up. So this will allow you to, um, to turn on any of those data collections for that particular performance measure. You can also set that from time, which is when VISM is going to start collecting the data. And this can be helpful, especially um, for creating like a warm-up time in the simulation. So you could allow the simulation to run, in this case, for 900 seconds, and then kind of warm up before that data collection actually begins to, to take place. And then there's also the two time here, which is when VISIN is going to stop that data collection. And then we also have the uh, interval, which will determine how that data is aggregated by time. And by default, you'll kind of see over here, all of the two time and the intervals are set to this uh, really high 99999 value. 
And that's just so that the data will be collected for the entire simulation um, just from the get-go. But you can, of course, further configure this to be for smaller intervals and for a particular from and to time. And then in addition, there's also this more button for a few of the options. And then just, this just allows for some further configuration on those particular items. All right, and then we have our last tab here, which is called direct output. And this is gonna contain some performance measures that can have some raw data collected. And these results will be stored outside of this then. And so this data will either be stored uh, within an external text file that is uh, semicolon delimited or in an external database. And similar to the aggregated results, you can also set that from time and the to time. And then there's also a few options that have some further configuration um, by clicking that more button. All right, so now we're gonna move into all of the different evaluation types, and we're gonna start with some of the network-wide measures. So the network performance within VISM does not require any special object or anything to be added. Um, it's just going to require that vehicle network performance option to be selected and activated within that evaluation configuration window. And the network performance is going to take into account any vehicles that are already at their destination or have left the network, um, as well as vehicles that are still in the network um, at the end of that evaluation interval. And this will provide results for um, some items like overall network delay, different um, the speed information, stop information, both the active and latent demand. And then you can also get um, information about the vehicle miles traveled and the vehicle hours traveled in, in the network. And so once you have that option turned on and you have run the simulation, you can then view any of the results um, within that evaluation menu again. And then if you go down to the bottom to results list, and in this case, you'll select that network performance vehicle results option. And once you have that option selected, that will open up this window down here at the bottom of the screen, and this will just show you um, all of those simulation results. And you can see here we've got um, information. In this case, we did uh, 10 different runs, so you can see all of those results for each of the runs there. And then you can also see some of the other, like the average standard deviation, min and max down here at the bottom as well. And if you did have any of those aggregation percentiles added, like if you had put 85 in there, you would also see an 85th um, percentile option down here near the bottom of the list as well. And now when we're looking at any of those results lists, they all are gonna kind of have that same window layout, and they're all gonna have this same menu bar that's up at the top. So for now, we just wanted to kind of go through um, the different options up here at the top, but this will be the same for any results window that you open up uh, within VISM. So the first item here is this little wrench icon, and this will allow you to configure um, the different attributes that show up um, here as columns. So it'll allow you to set up any of these columns that are showing up here. And then you can also sort the list either in ascending or descending order. You can turn on or off any filters using this little filter icon. You can also copy the uh, data from this list and then you can transfer it to another location. Like if you wanted to drop it into Excel, um, you can just use this copy button. And then there's also some other um, options down here at the end for different aggregation levels. So you can either set this up for each run or for each time period. And these will both um, allow those, the corresponding average standard deviation max and min to be printed out. All right, so from the network wide, now we're gonna take a look at some of the corridor measures. So for the corridor options, this is going to include options along the roadway corridor. So this will allow you to collect data on the links themselves, um, and also allow you to collect travel time information or position-based data using the data collection points. So first, we're gonna take a look at some of the, the link evaluation setup. So each of the links are going to have just a, a couple of different important evaluation attributes associated with them. And if you open up the link list, I, again, you can use this little wrench icon to add any additional attributes. 
And in this case, the main ones for evaluation are going to be this link uh, evaluation active and then also this link evaluation segment link. And so that active checkbox will just turn that link on so that data will be collected for it. While that segment length is going to determine over what link distance that data will be gathered. So in this case, we have um, just some small segment like lengths here. So this is 32.8 feet. And so in this case, each of the link are going to kind of be split up into these small uh, 32.8 foot segments. And then each of these segments is going to have the corresponding data displayed in the result list. Now, if you do want data to be collected over the entire link rather than for these smaller segments, you can also set this to a really high value like that 9999. Um, and that will just ensure that the entire link length is covered and the data will be provided for the link as a whole. And then in addition, you can also configure this within the link window itself. So if you double click on any link, you can get to this link window. And then you can just go to the Others tab over here on the right. And then you can choose, um, again, that link evaluation option. And then also you can update that segment length value underneath that evaluation section. And like the network performance, you can view any of the res link results by going back to that evaluation result list menu. And in this case, we're going to select the link results option. And again, those link results will be displayed at the bottom. And in this case, here's where you can see those different segments where are split up. So you can see in this case, we've got link number one. And then here, you can see all the different 32.8-foot uh, segments uh, building up within that link. And then you can see the data corresponding to each of those segments. So within the link results, you can get some information about uh, the link density, which is just the average number of vehicles um, divided by that particular segment length. Uh, you can also view relative uh, delay percentages, which are going to take into account the total delay for vehicles on the link segment over that total travel time for vehicles on the segment. And then you can also see the link speed, which is just that total distance traveled over that, that uh, total time traveled by the vehicles um, for that particular segment. And then you can finally get the volume as well. So this will be the number of trips that travel through that segment. And in this particular metric, it will account for both full trips, so the, if the entire vehicle has traveled through, and also partial trips. So even if you have just a part of the vehicle on that segment, that will also be taken into account as well. And then again, I uh, just wanted to mention that if you had any results that you wanted to do or perform some additional analysis, you can always click that copy button as well. And then this will allow you to take this data and then uh, paste it into maybe Excel, um, where you can perform some additional analysis and maybe create um, some additional scatter plots as well. All right, so next on the uh, corridor evaluation list here are the vehicle travel times. And the vehicle travel times have both a start point, um, which will show up here in light pink, and then an end point, which will be here in light green. And these can be placed along any roadway in the network. And in order for a vehicle to be included within that travel time data for that particular segment, the vehicle is going to have to travel over both that start point and that end point. So for example, if a vehicle did um, enter the network and hit that first point, if it then took a turn and, and never made it back to this particular location, then that vehicle would not be included. So they have to just keep traveling and, and go to both that start and end point. So in order to add these travel time measurements, um, first that vehicle travel time option will need to be selected from that network object toolbar. And then the start point can be placed if you right click on the link and then you can click uh, add new vehicle travel time measurement. And then you can place that endpoint with a left click. Uh, the other option as well, if you didn't want to go through that context menu, you can also press control and right click as well to place that, that start point here, um, again, that light pink bar. And then you can also um, left click again to place um, that final endpoint. 
And then all the results for these are also under that result list option. And in this case, they'll be stored under the vehicle travel time results. So these results here for the vehicle travel times are going to include items like the number of vehicles that traveled over that particular measurement, the travel time, and also the distance traveled. And here's where you can see if you did have different vehicle types selected within that evaluation configuration menu. Those are going to show up in here um, within the parentheses. So you can see here we've got measurements for all of the vehicles, so this will be everything combined. And then we also have some broken out for those particular vehicle classes, like in this case we've got cars, which are represented by 10, and then the heavy vehicles, um, which are number 20 here. So you can see that those will just show up as additional columns here within the uh, result list. All right, and then our last corridor evaluation here is for the data collection points. And these are going to work similar to nomadic tubes that are in the field, where these are going to be placed at a particular location on a link. And these points will just collect data for any vehicles that travel over them. And these are placed on individual lanes, not per link. So if you do have a multi-lane link, you'll need to add one data collection point to each of those lanes. And any of these points can be added once you have selected that data collection points object um, from the network object toolbar. And then you can either press uh, uh, right click on the link and then choose the add new data collection point. Or you can also just do the uh, control right click to drop that on um, the link at that particular location. And because these data collection points are uh, based on a particular lane rather than a link. These data, data collection points do require one additional configuration step to be completed. And this will really tell VISM how the data should be collected, if it should be collected for the lane itself, or should it be collected and aggregated for the link as a whole. And so these, this additional configuration is also done under that evaluation menu. And if you go down to the measurement definition option, you can then select the data collection measurements from there. And once you have that selected, it's going to open up this window here on the right-hand side. And in here, you can either choose to add a new measurement by just pressing the plus button, um, but you can also do this uh, automatically. So if you just right-click here in the uh, white space, you can then choose um, a couple of different options for the automatic creation. So if you, if you choose this Generate All Grouped, this will create options that are already grouped by the link. So this one kind of searches through all the data collection points and then can tell which link they're on, and then it will group those together. And you'll see here that any of those grouped options will show up here with this comma-separated list. So in this case, it, it grouped together data collection points number one and two because they're on the same link, and then also points three and four. And then if you also want to generate the data collection measurements for each lane. You can also choose this generate all one-to-one -one option, and this will drop in the individual measures as well here. So you can see um, the separate ones for each of those data collection points for one, two, three, and four. And once you have all of these created, the options, whatever you set up in here, will display within that result list. And again, these results can also be viewed under that result list option. And this time, they'll be under that data collection result. And so in here is where you can see all of those, those data collection points. So again, those include the number of vehicles that traveled over that particular location, and also some information about um, queuing, speed, um, and occupancy rates. And in here, you can see, uh, based on whatever data collection measurements you have set up, those will show up um, here within that list, whether they are grouped or the individual ones. All right, so for the next portion here, we're going to move on to some of the intersection-related results. And within this, the intersection data is really going to be collected um, with two different objects, either using nodes or queue counters. And nodes within VISM are really an area object rather than a point object. 
So these nodes, um, again, they'll be like a polygon that you'll place on the network, and these can be placed around any intersection to gather any intersection-specific data. So in order to add the nodes to the network, once you have those selected from the network object toolbar, you can then um, just right click anywhere in the network and then you can choose add new node. And this will just produce a square node um, which you can then move around or you can further configure from there. Or the second option is to configure that node mode directly from the beginning. And this will be done by pressing control and right click to place that first node point, which is going to show up um, in yellow. And then you can place any intermediate points by just um, left clicking. So you can see here we've got um, the second and third point placed. And then finally, once you're done creating your node and you've reached that last point, if you just double click, that will complete the node um, and allow you to open up that node window and perform some additional configuration. And then when you're adding nodes to the network, it's also important that when you are placing them around intersections, that you include any of the turn bays themselves. And then you'll also want to place the nodes such that any control devices like the stop signs and signal heads are located within that node. And that is especially important for evaluations because some of the data is going to be collected starting from that control device location. So it's important for those items to be within the node itself so that way those evaluations can be collected properly um, from that proper location. All right, so once that node has been added, um, you'll want to make sure that you have the use for evaluation option checked. And that can be done either in the node list, um, if you open that up and then you can check that use for eval option, or it can also be done in the node window. And which, when you're creating your nodes, this node window will automatically pop up uh, once you have created your node. And then you can just make sure you have that use for evaluation option selected. And then nodes are one of the objects that contain some additional configuration um, within that evaluation configuration window. So back in that window, if you um, Recall there were a few different performance measures that had the more option that you could select. And nodes are one of them where you can click that more button. And it will allow you to further refine how some of the node delays and queues are defined. So in VISM, the node delay is going to be based on a delay segment that VISM is going to place automatically. And this is going to be placed upstream of the node edge. And it's going to be defined um, by a particular distance, which in this case is 328 feet, um, which is again defined within the, the evaluation configuration. And so once this delay segment is, is kind of set up um, and defined again by VISM automatically, that's where um, kind of that start of that delay segment is going to be located um, for those delay values to be collected. So if you do have a lot of intersection queuing or maybe larger distances between intersections, um, you may want to increase this value. However, um, just wanted to note that this value is defined for all nodes in the network, not on the individual node level. So this is more of like a global setting that can be set. Um, so that's just something to be aware of if you do um, come into this menu to, to do any further configuration. And then the other big thing that nodes are going to define as well are going to be a queue definition. Um, so that VISM can measure those queues properly. And for the nodes, those are going to measure those queues that form, um, starting again at that stop control device location. So it is really important, again, just to make sure that those are included within the node, so that way that queue definition can be started at the proper location um, for those queues to be measured from. And as the vehicles are traveling through the network, um, and once they um, are approaching an intersection, um, those queues are going to start to be measured um, for any vehicles that are have their speed kind of fall below a particular threshold. So as you can see here um, in the chart in the bottom right, any, any vehicles will be in the queue once their speed falls below that lower threshold and will stay in that queue until their speed rises higher than that upper threshold that's set. 
And again, these speeds can be further refined within that evaluation configuration menu. And you'll see here is where we have that begin and end speed where you can change um, those definitions for the queuing. And for the node evaluations, as they are reporting their queues, the nodes will only consider um, queues until they reach another node. So for example, if, if maybe a, a queue length did extend through some upstream intersections and kind of fall back into another node, those would not be accounted for. So the nodes will really just measure queues back until it until that um, has reached another node. And then that node will take over and account for queues um, until that one reaches another node. So that's just something to uh, keep in mind as you're looking at the um, node queue results. So um, all the node results can be found again underneath that result list. And this time they'll be under the node results option. And again, in here, this list will allow you to view that queue length data, um, information about the number of stops and the stop delay time, as well as vehicle delay. And it is important to note that this is going to be simulation-based delay. And so any of the assigned LOS values that you see here uh, within VISIM are going to be assigned, again, based on that simulation-based delay. All right, and then for our uh, final intersection evaluation measure here, we have the queue counters. And these are placed on the link itself rather than per lane. And unlike nodes, these queue counters actually collect data for queues that spill back through upstream intersections. So again, whereas the nodes will kind of stop once they reach the next node, uh, these queue counters will be able to collect any of that spillback that occurs uh, through intersections. So once the queue counters are selected from that network object toolbar, you can then add them either through that context menu after you right click on a link, or you can also press control and right click um, to place those queue counters on a link as well. And again, uh, for the results for these, it will all be stored underneath that result list under queue results. And these results will be produced, again, for each link um, rather than by lane. And these will display information about the queue length, um, the maximum queue length, and also the number of steps. All right, so now that we've covered um, kind of the network-wide corridor and intersection uh, performance measures, now we're gonna take a look at some of the vehicle-related data. So all of the um, results on the vehicle level can be printed out in more of a raw format. And this will be back under that evaluation configuration menu. And it will be found under that direct output tab. And so all of these will be stored under that vehicle record option here. And this can also be further configured again to print out for a specific time. And then some additional configuration can also be done by selecting that more button. And when you have that more button selected, um, that, this will allow you to um, set up information about the specific vehicle classes to um, print out the data for. And it will also allow you to add additional attributes to the result file. So if you click on the um, attribute selection item here, this will allow you to set information um, about the distance traveled, um, speed, dwell time, acceleration. Um, if you're capturing any information about maybe buses, um, or for any other public transit item, you can also set up the transit lines and stops, and you can also print out some routing information as well. Um, really, any attribute that's stored on the vehicle um, can be selected in here and then will show up within that result file. All right, and so the one, once the simulation is run, um, again, since the, the vehicle record is within that direct output tab, in this case, it's going to print out a raw output file. And this is going to have a, an extension um, that will be a .fzp. And any of these raw result files, you can open them in a text editor, 
um, or you can also import them into um, like Excel and post process them. So if you just take a look and open these up in a text editor, um, at the top is a lot of going to be like the description information. So you can see here we've got um, the version that was used, um, the date that this was printed out, and then this will also show any of the vehicle attributes that you have selected. Uh, those will show up here um, with some description. And then once we kind of get past all of the, the star information just for all those comments, you'll then see the column headers will show up here in, in this line first. So you can see here we've got the simulation second, number, um, the lane number, um, and so on. And then after that header option is when we start to have all of that data printed out. And all of the data in here is going to be semicolon delimited. So again, if you want to do any sort of post-processing, you can bring this into Excel. Um, and then you can kind of use that to filter and sort data or create um, any other plots or time-space diagrams as well. So again, these, these kind of produce a lot of the raw format, which would need to be further post-processed, but does contain a lot of useful data, um, particularly on that vehicle level. All right, and then finally, we have a, a few other types of evaluations we would like to cover. cover. And so the remaining evaluation types um, include some performance measures for pedestrians, for parking, dynamic assignment, public transit, vehicle inputs, and SSAM. And so some of these we're going to cover in more detail during future sessions. Um, but today, we just wanted to go over um, a couple of options, um, in this case, the vehicle inputs and for SSAM. So within VISIN, um, this is actually a new evaluation um, that was kind of added in version 2021. Um, in previous versions, the vehicle input information would be stored in the log file, but now all of these results can actually be found within VISIN directly. And the vehicle input evaluations are going to include data regarding vehicles that were unable to enter that simulation, um, typically due to some downstream congestion. So whenever that um, this particular evaluation is turned on, you'll be able to get information about any of this latent demand, and then also the associated delay for each of the vehicle inputs that are in the network. And in order to configure this, um, there's no additional object or anything that needs to be added. Um, this will just need to be the vehicle inputs option will just need to be selected um, within that result attribute tab within the evaluation configuration window. And once that's been configured, you can then go back to that um, evaluation result list option, and then you can select the vehicle input results. And this will open up the window here at the bottom. And again, this will show you information for each of the inputs in the network as well as that latent demand and then that particular delay. All right, and then for our final output here, we have the SSAM evaluation, um, which is the surrogate safety assessment model. And this was developed by Federal Highway. And um, what this particular output does is actually creates a file that can be loaded into this SSAM application that Federal Highway developed and can then be used to analyze some um, potential conflict locations. So um, because this is, this is again, more of a raw output, um, if, if you go back to that direct output tab in the evaluation configuration, you can select the SSAM option in, within this window, and then you configure both that from and to time as well. And then you can either record this data for the entire network, or you can also select the More button there to um, just select a particular section to record data for. And we haven't really covered or talked about sections yet, but the sections in VISTIM are really, um, again, just a polygon, just representing a certain area. And these are really added to the network just like nodes. So um, the objects themselves are pretty similar to nodes, but they really just kind of define an area within VISTIM. And so if you wanted to maybe just collect the safety data for um, maybe a few intersections in the network, you can draw a section around that area, and then you can select that particular section um, or sections within this more option here.
And then uh, this SSAM output is going to produce that external file again, and that will be saved with a TRJ uh, extension. And then once you have that file, that can then be loaded into that SSAM application from here to do some further analysis on um, some of those conflict locations. So this really concludes um, a look at all of the different evaluation configuration that's required to set up, and then also all of those evaluation-related objects and um, the results associated with those. So from here, we can go ahead and move over to the example file. And in this file, which we will upload, um, we also will, uh, you'll, we have, um, this file will include a lot of these evaluation objects already set up and put in place. Um, but here we just wanted to add a couple of other items as well. So first I'll just start with the nodes object. And again, in order to add any of those, um, especially if you have an, inter um, an intersection with some of the turn bays, um, like we have here on the uh, northbound approach, um, these are sometimes a bit easier to do in the wireframe mode. Um, but again, you can just press uh, control and right click to get that node started. And then you can just left click from here to um, continue dropping in some of these intermediate points and to draw those nodes around those turn bay locations. And again, I'll just keep drawing that, making sure to include any of the turn bays, and then also just making sure that all of the uh, signal heads, in this case, and stop signs are included within that node. And then once you're done, you can just double click, and that will complete the node. And then again, you'll just want to make sure you've got that used for evaluation option selected. And all of the nodes can also be further configured. Um, again, if you just press Control and right click, um, you can drop in additional points, which you can then drag around. Um, you can also, if you kind of hover your mouse within the node area, you can also just left click and drag. And that will just move the node um, as a whole um, if you wanted to do any sort of further Moving, moving the node around or add in some additional points. You can also extend a particular edge along the node as well. If you kind of hover over one of those edges, you'll see this little uh, double-headed arrow that shows up. So you can also just left click and click and drag on here um, if you wanted to ever extend or shorten an edge um, without moving each of the points individually. Um, and again, nodes, the, they also have kind of another option as well, in addition to this polygon, um, which we didn't really cover um, during the presentation. But if you right click on any of these nodes, you can also convert them into a segment. And so this will just kind of tag that node um, onto the links themselves, um, rather than having it be an area. Um, you can also always reconvert them back. However, when you do that reconversion, it'll just show up as a square. So you'd have to just further configure it just to make sure you've got um, everything kind of covered. And for the evaluation purposes, you can have nodes in either way, either in Polygon um, or the segment, uh, just as long as you've got your kind of control devices within those nodes. All right, and then for uh, some of those other objects, if we take a look at the data collection points, again, these are stored uh, on the lanes themselves. So if you did um, want to collect data for an entire link, you'll just want to make sure that you drop in those data collection points for all of the lanes. And again, because these are link uh, lane-based rather than link-based, um, these do have that further configuration option that's required, um, which is under that evaluation menu, and then measurement definition, and then under that data collection measurement option. And again, in here, if you wanted to do any individual configuration, you can always press the plus button here, and then you can select those data collection points that you want to group together. Uh, or the other option as well is to just right click and generate some of those automatically. So again, if you do that grouped option, you'll see here it'll drop in all of those groups based on the link number that those are located on. So here you can see we've got points seven, eight, and nine. And those were all grouped together here under the measurement number seven. 
And then if you did still want to collect data for each of the lanes individually, you can also choose that group all one-to-one, -one, and that will drop in each of the one-to-one, -one, um, the single individual options as well. All right, and then if we take a look at the next option here, which is for those vehicle travel times, uh, these are going to be, again, kind of similar to routes in that they have a start and end, end, end point. So if you want to place in, um, that start point, again, you can just press Control and right click to drop in that first point. And then you can choose any other um, end point don't destination to place that end point. So in this case, maybe I'll come down to um, this network exit point, And I will just drop in that vehicle travel time measurement. And again, any for any vehicle to be included in within these results, the vehicle will need to pass over both that start and that endpoint in order for that information to be picked up. And of course, like any of the network objects, you can also view these in more detail if you right click on those and go to show list. And this will just show you a list of all of those um, travel time measurements that you've pl placed in the network. And this will just allow you to quickly see what link um, they start and end on, as well as that total distance that they are covering. All right, and then for our final uh, evaluation object here, we've got those queue counters. And again, the queue counters are going to be placed on the link um, as a whole. So if you just press Control and right click, um, you can just place that queue counter. Um, again, for that link. And unlike nodes, these queue counters will include um, any spillback that forms. So if you did have um, spillback forming through multiple intersections, those queue counters will pick up any of that um, as well and include that within the queuing results. So now if we take a look at the evaluation configuration, uh, we've got this set up right now to just collect um, most of the the results related to these network objects. And in this case, we've started with a 900 second warm up time. So you'll see that data won't be collected until 900 seconds. And then we'll go for the full simulation time, um, which is we have a one hour to collect the results for. And those will end at um, 4,500. And also in this case, we have switched the results to be kept just for this current set of multi-run. So if we did have any previous results stored in here, those will be um, removed. And then just the results from this new multi-run will be uh, created. And so again, in the um, simulation parameters, that's where we've got that main um, simulation period set. So in this case, again, 4,500. Um, and in this case, we do have 10 run set up, so that way it'll run through multiple and collect data for multiple feeds as well. So if I go ahead and start the simulation, um, then once this is running, you'll, you'll notice once we hit that 900 seconds, we actually will start to get some data being recorded. And again, if you go back to that evaluation and result list option, this is where you can view any of the, that result information. So if I just select the links here, you'll see that it has already printed out the items that are going to be recorded. So you can see here all of those evaluation segment lengths, as well as the corresponding time interval. Um, in this case, we have the links recording data every 900 seconds. So you'll see a few different time intervals in here, like 900 to 1800, um, 1800 to 2700, and so on. And if we just turn on quick mode here for a little bit, um, kind of get up to the 900 second mark, um, that's when we'll start to see some of this data being populated. And as the simulation is running, you'll see this is going to be constantly updating as um, the simulation is running and, and the results are being calculated. And since we are doing multiple runs, um, you'll also see here um, down at the bottom is where all of those averages min, max, um, standard deviation will be stored, um, as well as, in this case, we have some the 80, 85th percentile set up within that evaluation configuration menu. So 
So we added in that 85 percentile. So you'll see here that's where all of those results will show up as well. And then once the uh, simulation is run, of course, you can always um, come back and open up these lists at any point in time and review the results um, directly within Bison. And if you have any um, those external files, let me just open up the directory here. Any of those will be stored uh, within the directory where your network file is located um, by default. So you'll see here we've got some of those external files for the vehicle record and for that SSAM trajectory that show up uh, by default. And actually, Vistim stores any of these internal results that we see here in this in the result list. All of those actually get stored in this. Um, it'll be named your network file and then dot results. So this is a really important um, folder to keep around because all of those results will get stored within here uh, once that simulation is done running. Um, so once you have completed some of those runs, all of those will get stored in there. And then Vistim kind of references that um, those particular database files that it stores to open up these result lists um, within Vistim. All right, so that kind of goes over all of the those different result options and setting up those evaluation objects. And again, next time we're going to take a look in more detail at how we can visualize some of these results so that you can kind of see information within the network itself so you can view information about like the link speeds. Um, and see information on the um, intersection level as well as on the vehicles themselves so that you can also use use that visualization um, and different charting features within VISM as well to kind of analyze and, and look through all of the data that gets collected.